guns, climate change, feminism, abortion, gay marriage, Fox News, universal health care, Simone Biles dropping out of the Olympics. These are a few of the many topics listed on the Wikipedia page entitled List of Controversial Issues. Chances are, when you hear these words, like me, you immediately know whether you're for or against the topic, whether you think the issue is clearly right or obviously wrong. Chances are, even if you're a kid and you don't fully understand these topics yet, you still have a sense of what's right and what's wrong based on what the adults in your life think. When I was a kid, my parents brainwashed me to believe the McDonald's was inherently evil. Meanwhile, every other kid on the planet thought it was wonderful. How did they do this, you might be wondering. Well, Every time we drove past the golden arches in our car, my mom or dad would exclaim from the front seat, Ew, McDonald's, that food is gross. Seriously. <laughs> Inside the little bubble of my small family unit, I lived in a world where McDonald's was bad. And therefore, that's what I believed. Today, we live in a technological culture where the algorithms used by social media platforms feed us a steady diet of information that validates what we already think. Through carefully selected ads and posts from our friends, these platforms publish minute-by-minute minute carbon copies of our own opinions, making it more and more unfathomable with each passing day that anyone might disagree with us. For example, I don't watch the news, but I do use social media, and I try to keep up with the headlines on my phone. I've seen so many posts in the past few days in support of Simone Biles dropping out of the Olympic Games and advocating for mental health awareness that I didn't even realize that there was another side to that story. I literally had no idea that Simone was receiving criticism until I saw a post or two from some friends that were saying things like, I know this may be an unpopular or controversial opinion, but dot, dot, dot. Polarization is defined as a division between two sharply distinct opposites, especially a state in which the opinions, beliefs, or interests of a group or a society no longer range along a continuum, but become concentrated at opposing extremes. Polarization is when everything becomes black or white. Polarization makes it very difficult to build relationships in the way that Jesus calls us to with people with whom we disagree. This is true in public life, in private life, in work life, and in the church, too. For example, I love hymns and liturgy. I grew up in a church with a rock band and a pastor that showed Hollywood movie clips every week in his sermon. And so it's only been as an adult that I've discovered the strength and joy of more traditional forms of worship. I also realize and respect that not everyone shares my love of traditional worship. But when I encounter a fellow Christian who assumes that hymns and liturgy are only for outdated, dying churches that are stuck in their ways, I find it hard to even want to have a conversation with that person. In the church, 
we have just as many, if not more, ways than the culture around us to be divided. We divide ourselves over the role of women, who can and cannot take communion, when it is and is not a suitable time for a child to be baptized. We divide ourselves across lines of Catholic and Protestant, theologically liberal and theologically conservative, whether the Bible is inerrant or inspired. Our own denomination, like many, has been arguing over same-sex marriage and the acceptability of LGBTQ clergy for decades. Honestly, it's enough to make God slam on the brakes and shout into the back seat, will you just stop fighting? If it's any consolation, the early church was no different. In the Bible, we read that one minute the early church was dividing themselves based on which church leaders they wanted to follow. The next, they're arguing about whether or not it's okay for Christians to eat meat. And everywhere, all the time, constantly they're fighting about whether or not the Gentile Christians need to be circumcised. In the midst of this divisive climate, not too unlike our own, the author of the book of Ephesians reminds the believers to look up from their ideological bunkers and remember that even when they disagree, God has called them to unity. He writes this, Make every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all. It's almost as though God assigned the author of Ephesians to write it out on the blackboard a hundred times. The church is united as one. The church is united as one. The church is united as one. But please don't mistake this for a simple little assignment to kiss and make up. Christian unity isn't defined by uniformity. Christian unity maintains plenty of room for diversity. Because Christian unity isn't about agreeing. Christian unity is about answering God's call to love and serve one another together in the midst of our differences. The author of Ephesians argues that Christian unity happens when Christians stop focusing on their differences and start focusing on how they can serve in love together. He says this in verses 11, 12, and 13. The gifts that God gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity to the measure of the full stature of Christ. A mature faith accepts that the world is not black and white, that humans are going to disagree, and that disagreement can be healthy and edifying. A mature faith respects and honors differences. A mature faith knows that what defines us as Christians is not how alike we all look, but rather how much we love and serve one another. A mature faith lives into the vision of the body of Christ that the writer of Ephesians describes like this. But speaking the truth in love, 
We must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Christian unity is not about uniformity. It's about loving and serving one another in our differences. Imagine a place where billionaires and homeless folks could sit side by side at the same table, where oil execs and environmentalists, pro-lifers and pro-choicers, pro-vaxxers and anti-vaxxers could join their hearts in prayer. Imagine a place where veterans and conscientious objectors could shake hands in deep respect, where oppressed and oppressor could wash one another's feet. Imagine a place where the undocumented immigrant and the border control officer could share a meal together, where the straight man and the gay man could each pull up a chair where the Black Lives Matter activist and the Blue Lives Matter officer could share and embrace. Imagine a place where the abuser and the abused, the gun activist and the gun control lobbyist, the liberal and the conservative could link arms in purpose and conviction, knowing that they share a caller, a calling, knowing that they share a calling deeper than everything that divides them believing that they share a purpose far more important than any side, that they are called to love and serve side by side as one in the name of Jesus. Imagine that that place was the church. Amen. This is a message from the Father Almighty. Dear child, stop. You have wandered far away from me. You have fallen short of my glory. You are nothing but sheer imperfection, yet I still love you. Because of my love, I have reached out to you and sent my own beloved son to rescue you, to suffer and die because of you, to pay the price that belonged to you just because I love you. I have set a table before you to share in communion with you, the body that was broken for you, the blood that was shed for you, and through the everlasting sign of my love, come back to me, child, and share in my love for you. Amen. <laughs> 